Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can get started with backend driven UI when you're using the Swift UI framework. Now, first of all, we need to understand what exactly is backend driven UI. Well, right now, if I am doing something and if I want to add a text or do anything, I will go ahead and I will simply add a text or any other control or view and that will reflect in my application. In order to make that application visible or to publish that update to my customers, I will have to submit the app to the App Store and wait for it to be approved, which might take a day or two or maybe three, four, or maybe the whole week. Sometimes you want to change the structure of your UI just remotely so that you can simply change it in a JSON file or some sort of a configuration file and it is reflected immediately on your client screen without having to provide an update. And that is the whole point of backend driven UI. Now, let me be very, very clear about this video. This is an experiment so I don't want you to go and start changing your application to accommodate backend driven UI. For this video, we're going to look at creating a UI where we can display a rounded image. Now I have already created a JSON file and just for the sake of simplicity, I'm adding this JSON file right in my project, but you will be loading this JSON file from some sort of an API. We have a page title and we have a list of templates. A template simply means that this is the kind of a control that we want to display. The type of the control is rounded image and the data that it will display will consist of the title and the image URL. And we will go ahead and add some more things to it also. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I need to do is I need to create some sort of a parent template, meaning a template that can be used to represent our data, everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some sort of a protocol that my templates can use. A template is just a piece of a structure which also contains or can contain a data, uh, a model, and then it will render a particular view. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with a protocol to define my template, UI template. And a template will contain a unique ID, which can be your UID. This unique ID, we are, we are going to use it when we are iterating through the templates in a list or in a for each loop uh, when we are using the content view. And each template will have a render function, which is going to return you a view, any kind of a view, all right? Now for the unique ID, I don't want my other templates to generate the unique ID. I mean, they can if they want to, but we can go ahead and write an extension for the UI template that simply generates the unique ID for them. Okay, so this is great. We have created our UI template. Now looking at our JSON file, we can see that we're gonna be dealing with rounded image. That's the type of the view that we want to build. So I'm gonna go over here and create a template type, and I will make sure this is an enum. So template type, which is string, and also this is decodable, and we will call it rounded image. Make sure that the name or the case for this is exactly the same as this one, because if it's not, then it's not going to be decoded correctly when you are decoding JSON to some sort of a model. All right, so this is good. Now what we want to do is we want to represent our data, which is this part. So we have a type and we have the data. This is the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a structure UI model, which is decodable. And I will go ahead and create a type 
which is template type, the one that we just created, and data. Now this is where the com com complexity comes. You can see that I'm going to put it as a dictionary of string and string. Uh, ideally, I would like to put it as integer, uh, I mean any, because in the JSON, you can see that currently we're using string and string, but the value can be anything. And right now you can see that it does not accommodate that need. It is always going to be string and string. If I make it any, then obviously I won't be able to perform decoding because any can be anything. So that's why I'm simply going to put it as a string for now. Okay, so this is uh, something that you can look into and if you find a solution to that, that, that will accommodate any kind of a data, let me know and uh, maybe I can update the video or update the code. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a shared template that is going to represent the entire thing. So I'm going to go over here and create a structure and I will call it shared template, which is also decodable. This will have a page title, which is string, and it has a list of templates, which are of type UI model. So meaning that we are going to be passing in that particular model uh, for the templates, all right? Okay, so this part is done. All right, so we have created the UI model, we have created the shared template. We also need to find a way to load our file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some code that will allow us to load the actual file. So I'm extending the shared template. I'm adding the load function. You pass in the name of the page, which in this case will be movies screen. We can actually replace that with the actual page name. It is going to be a JSON file. We are going to load the path, load the data, and then decode it. All right. So this will give us the shared template, and now we can use a shared template. But right now, we don't really have any templates or views to begin with. So the first, one of the things that we have to do is we will have to build a template. So let's go ahead and build a template. Structure, rounded image template. The job of the template is to render the view and to pass the actual model to the view. Let's go ahead and create the model. Model, which will be rounded image model, which by the way does not really exist. And then we will implement the render function. And then we will say rounded image view, which also does not exist. We are going to pass in the model and we are going to call to any view to convert this to any view. Okay, so rounded image model, we don't have anything called a rounded image model. So let's go ahead and create that. The rounded image model is going to be specifying this portion, the, the model part. So let's go back. And you can see that's pretty simple. I mean, it only contains the title and the image URL. The next part that we want to do is we want to implement the rounded image view. That's the actual view that is going to get displayed. So let me go ahead and copy that also. The rounded image view contains or takes a model, use the URL image, which is our own custom view, and a text to display everything. So all of this part is now done. Now we can move to the movies view model. The view is going to use the movies view model to display everything. So let's see that what movies view model uh, looks like. Well, the first thing we will do is we will get access to the templates. So I will simply say published var templates, and this will be a UI template, so an array of UI template, and we will have a load function. 
So inside the load function, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get the shared template. So we got the shared template by calling shared template.load. Now the shared template contains other templates. So I can simply say templates dot for each. And now we will get each template. We can perform a switch on the template. So I can say template dot type. And if the type is rounded image, then we can do something about it. We can uh, go ahead and decode it. So we can say template dot data dot decode. I already created a function called decode. We can use that. And this is going to give us the rounded image model because on the left side, we're actually going to say rounded image model. Else, well, else we can't really do anything. We'll just say return. Okay, so we got the rounded image model. And next, what we want to do is we want to display or add a template to the templates collection. So I'm going to go ahead and say dispatch dispatchq.main.async and I will say self.templates.append create a new template which is rounded image template and pass in the model which in this case is simply the model. Well, let's go ahead and see what we're doing. Not the model, sorry. It's the rounded image model. And that's pretty much it. Now we can actually go ahead and jump onto the content view. We already have the movies view model, the one that we just created, and we are already performing the load function. All we need to do now is to go ahead and perform a for each on templates. The ID in this case will be the unique ID. And we will get each template in and now we can simply go ahead and say template dot render. Great. Let's go ahead and check it out what it actually does. I'm going to open up the canvas and going to see if it actually renders anything when we are running our code. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. This is our rounded image template. Now, if we want to print out something completely different, if we wanted to print out, let's say, some sort of a different template, it can be gradient or whatever you want to print out, we can go to our movie screen, copy this stuff. Instead of rounded image, we are just going to call it gradient box. And a gradient box will simply have title and no image URL. There we go. So now we have to create a template and the view for the gradient box. So this means I can go back to my shared template. The first thing I need to update would be the template type. Make sure that you call it correctly, gradient box, and make sure it matches exactly like over here, gradient box. Should actually copy paste it. There we go. And now we can go ahead and uh, create a template for the gradient box, just like we had a template for rounded image template. So gradient box template, which will be a UI template. It is going to take in a model, which will be a gradient box model, which we don't have right now. So don't worry about it right now. Render. And we are going to render a gradient box view where we will pass in the actual model. We don't have gradient box view also. Let's see that if we have the gradient box uh, model, we don't. So let's go ahead and create that. We will make it codable. And I believe the only thing the gradient box has is the title, and that's pretty much it. For the gradient box view, we are going to be creating a view. So structure, gradient box view will be a view. 
And in Swift UI, the view must contain the body. So there we go, we got the body. And we are going to return something. Um, we can say text model dot title. So in the gradient box view, you're going to pass in the model, which is the gradient box model. We can go ahead and set some sort of a frame for it. So let's say uh, 300 height and 300 dot background color, which can be a linear gradient. And we will just use the default gradient colors. All right, let's go ahead and build this. All right, and we have to return any, so we're gonna call to any view. There we go. Now we need to update the switch because now we have a different template that we need to return based on the gradient box. Guard let gradient box model, which is a gradient box model equals to template dot data dot decode, not description, it's a decode, else we will simply go ahead and return it. And then again, we are going to perform the dispatch. And we are going to add in this time, we're going to add the, the gradient box model or the gradient box template. And there we go. Now we can go back to our content view and try to resume it. And we will see that if we are able to show two different things, the image and the gradient box. And there we go. Pretty cool, right? Our UI is now driven by backend. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that you should go back to all of your code and start changing everything. I mean, there are only a few applications that require this kind of a behavior. And you can see it's a very, very, uh, at a basic level, there are a lot of flaws in this approach, starting with the UI model, which is uh, right here, which is actually taking in only string and string. So make sure that you understand all of these different things. Although you can do these things, it's not like that you have to do these things. In some application, you will end up doing these things uh, where you have to remotely update a lot of UI stuff or change maybe the design on the fly. Uh, but most of the time in most application, you will not require these kind of techniques. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this small session for creating a back and driven user interface. And uh, you will be the judge of it that if you want to use it at special cases, you, you can uh, just make sure that it goes with the application that you're trying to build. If you like this video and want to support my work, then simply visit patreon.com slash adamsharp and become a patron. Patrons will get exclusive access to the videos and it will be ad-free videos. They will also get access to my new courses uh, and discounts on the courses, publication, books, everything. So make sure that you go to patreon.com slash adamsharp and support my work. Uh, as you can imagine, all of these videos takes in intense amounts of time. I mean, it is it takes hours and hours and sometimes even weeks of work to produce these videos. And I will always appreciate uh, your donations and I will always appreciate that you are becoming a patron. Uh, thank you so much. And the link to the patron along with the link to all of my courses is in the YouTube description. So if you like my YouTube courses, uh, Udemy courses, you can definitely check out the YouTube description also. Thank you so much.